Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve a problem on signal flow graph and the problem is find the overall transfer function of the system whose signal flow graph is shown in figure. So this is your given signal flow graph and we are asked to find the transfer function of this signal flow graph. So here the first step in calculating the transfer function is forward path gain. So here as the name indicates forward path is nothing but it will start at one node and it will end, end at some other node and the arrow heads in that path will be always directing forward. They will be in the forward direction. So when you consider this problem you see you, a path starts from node 1 it travels through 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and finally it reaches the power node 8. When you observe the arrow head, you see every arrow head is moving forward and this is your first forward path. That is, you see here I have drawn separately. It starts from node 1 and ends at node 8 and in between it travels through all the between nodes. Now we are going to calculate the forward path gain. So forward path gain is nothing but just you have to multiply the values over here. So when you multiply you will be having 1 into G1 into G2 into G3 into G4 into G5 into 1. Right. That's all. This is your first forward path gain. It is represented as P1. Then when you look at the problem carefully. There is an another forward path. It starts at node 1. It reaches node 2. Again it reaches node 5 and again it reaches 6, 7 and 8. You see here I have drawn this one separately. So when you look at this again it starts from node 1 reaches node 2 and it reaches node 5. Then it ends with 8. Again you look at the arrow heads you see each and every arrow head is moving forward. So this is your second forward path and the respective gain of the second forward path will be 1 into G5 into G4 into G5. Just multiply these things. That's all. So, this is represented as P2 and P2 is equal to G4, G5, G6. Right. This is your first step. And the second step is calculating the individual loop gain. As I already said, a loop is a closed path. It will start and end with the same node. So, when you look at this problem, you see here, when you see 3 and 4, you see it starts. A branch that is an arrow head, a signal starts from node 3, it reaches 4 and again it get backs with the node 3. So this is a loop. Again I have drawn this loop separately. How to calculate the loop gain? Just you have to multiply the values present here. So when you multiply you will be having G2 into minus H1 which is nothing but minus G2 H1. Right. Again when you consider node 6 and 7 that is an another loop right. You see, this is a loop. So here, I have drawn this one separately again. And the loop gain is nothing but G5 into minus H3. So here you will be having minus G5 H3. And again, when you consider the nodes 3, 4 and 5, you see, from 3 to 4 and 4 to 5. And again, the signal comes back to node 3. And again, this also forms a loop. So here, you see, 3, 4 and 5. So it starts from 3, passes through 4 and finally reaches 5. And again it comes and ends with the node 3. So again the gain value of this loop will be G2, G3 into minus H2. So here I had written as minus G2, G3, H2. This is our step number 2. And the next one is step number 3. It is nothing but we are going to calculate gain product of two non-touching loops. So here I have again drawn this diagram. So non-touching loop here as the name indicates the two loops will be separate. Okay. They won't have any common node. So here in this case when you look it is clear right. Here this is a loop and again this is a loop and these two loops are not touching. Okay. It is clear from the diagram itself. So first I am drawing this loop 3, 4 and, and again 6 and 7. So just calculate the value of gains. So just multiply the values. You will be having minus G2 H1 for this loop and minus G5 H3 for this loop. So the first one is 
gain product of first combination of two non touching loops that is you have to multiply the gain so just multiply this value with this value so when you multiply you will be having minus g2 h1 into minus g5 h3 so minus into minus will be plus and the remaining things you just write as such g2 g5 h1 and h3 right and the ne next one is again look at this diagram you just consider this loop that is 3 4 5 and this path okay this loop and again consider this loop again these two loops are not touching right they won't have any common nodes so here i have drawn this diagram <coughs> separately and again calculate the respective value of gain so here for this loop the gain will be minus g2 g3 h2 and for this loop the value of gain will be minus g5 h3 so again the gain product will be just you have to multiply these two gains so when you multiply again minus into minus will become plus and we have we have to write the respective values g2 g3 g5 h2 and h3 right this is your step number 3 and the next one is step number 4 so here the step number 4 is calculation of del and del k so del is nothing but 1 minus sum of individual loop gain plus sum of gain products of all possible combinations of two non-touching loops minus it goes on right so here listen we have three loops right that is from our step number two we have three loops so now we have to substitute the respective values so one minus l1 plus l2 plus l3 plus and again sum of gain product of all possible combinations of two non-touching loops so here in this non-touching loops you are having two combinations right one is m1 and another one is m2 so just write write the terms in this formula and now we are going to substitute the values so here 1 minus what is the value of l1 minus g2 h1 and l2 is minus g5 h3 and L3 is minus G2, G3, H2, right, plus, and again we are having M1. So, what is the value of M1 here? So, M1 is G2, G5, H1, H3, and what is the value of M2? M2 is G2, G3, G5, H2, H3. So, just substitute the values here. And again, when you move this negative sign inside this bracket, we will be having minus into minus will become plus, Again, this minus and this minus will become plus and this minus, this minus will become plus. In the remaining terms, you can write as such. Right. Now, we have calculated the value of del. Right. Then, the next one is, we have to calculate del 1 and del 2. What do you mean by del 1 and del 2? Because we have two forward paths. So, if we have two forward paths, we have to calculate del 1, del 2. Suppose, if we have some four forward paths, then we have to calculate del 1, del 2, del 3 and del 4. The value of this del 1, del 2 depends upon the number of forward paths. So, the first one is del 1. So, here I have drawn the first forward path. So, in this first forward path, is there is any node which is not covered by this first forward path? No, because our first forward path covers all the nodes. That is from node 1 to node 8. So here in this case, the value of del 1, we should take it as 1. Right. And the next one is del 2. So here, you have to consider our second forward path. Right. So when you consider our second forward path, you see here, this is our second forward path. And there is a loop which do not touches this second forward path, right. So, here again the formula will be 1 minus sum of individual loop gain. So, here I am having a loop and the respective gain of this loop is just you have to multiply the values minus G2 H1. So, here I have written this 1 minus sum of individual loop gain. So, sum of individual loop gain is here I am having only one loop. So, just I have written the values of that loop. So, minus G2 H1. Again, when you bring this minus sign inside this bracket here, you will be having minus into minus will become plus. So, 1 plus G2 H1. Right? Hope you people are clear with this del 1 and del 2. And the next one is transfer function so this is our final step so here in this case 
The transfer function is given by the formula 1 by del summation of k p k del k. So here in this case k denotes the number of forward paths. So in this problem we have two forward paths. So here I have writing it as p1 del 1 plus p2 del 2. So we know all the values right. We had calculated what is del and what is p1 del 1 and p2 del 2. So just I am going to write the values. So here this is the value of P1. So just substitute here. G1, G2, G3, G4, G5 into del1. So here what is the value of del1? Del1 is 1 plus P2. What is the value of P2? So G4, G5, G6 multiplied by del 2. What is the value of del 2? It is 1 plus g2 h1. So 1 plus g2 h1. The whole divided by here I am having del. So what is the value of del? Again here we have find out this is the value of del. So just write this expression as such here. So here you will be having 1 plus g2 h1 plus g5 h3 plus g2 g3 h2 plus g2 g5 h1 h3 plus g2 g3 g5 h2 h3 right so here i have written the values and the next one is just i am going to multiply the terms plus when you multiply you will be having g4 g5 g6 when multiplied with 1 i am having the same expression plus again you multiply this term with this g2 h1 so here you will be having g2 g4 g5 g6 h1 divided by then this denominator term remains as such right so here in this case again you look at the common terms here i am having g2 g2 g4 and g5 are common you see g2 g4 and g5 so when i take g2 g4 and g5 commonly outside the remaining terms will be here g2 g4 and g5 are taken so the remaining terms will be g1 g3 plus again here i'm having only g4 g5 right so when i take g2 what it means i have to there is no g2 term here so i have to write it in the denominator plus again when you take here g2 g4 and g5 the remaining terms will be g6 and h1 and again the entire term divided by this respective expression g2 h1 plus g5 h3 plus g2 g3 h2 plus g2 g5 h1 h3 plus again g2 g3 g5 h2 h3 so this is your final expression for the transfer function hope you people understand the problem thank you